in the home care company in the country. One of our favorite guests. It's our fourth time that he's on. It's always a great time. Welcome to 62 Who Knew. Hey guys, Mike Banner here. This is what, our 49th or 50th episode, John? 50. Two more weeks, we'll have our one year anniversary. We have something very special planned for that. Nothing planned for that. <laughs> no idea. But we're going to create something in the next two weeks that is something very special. Uh, thank you for coming back. I want to give a huge, huge thank you to Mr. Mark Lickman, who was here with us last week, uh, who created BuddyInsurance.com, a national. Um, information site, not just for long-term care insurance. Uh, Mark's father was one of the pioneers of the long-term care insurance business. Nice. Um, but not only did he create it, but he also created it for the 4 million um, care agents, healthcare agents in the country, an information source. Wow. We're so glad to have him. It's a great show. It was very well watched. I'm going to be going on his uh, LinkedIn interview show in the next couple of weeks. Um, and this next show, what we're doing today, so thank you so much, Mark. Uh, so much appreciate you being there. Uh, but tonight we bring back one of our favorite people, Mr. Colin Castle, the regional director of In Home, of Home Instead, which is the largest in-home care, non-medical in-home care company in the United States of America. Uh, one of our favorite guests was one of our first guests in the first few months of our show. Mm -hmm has come back four times. And somehow I keep getting these milestone shows, and I'm not really sure. It's not planned. Yeah, I know, but you do. In fact... Uh, Is it like 25, and I'm on the 50th? Yeah, I know. This is really cool. Maybe you'll be back for the anniversary, but we don't know what we're doing for the anniversary. <laughs> it's not been planned Wait yet. a minute. Two weeks from now. That's not Labor Day, is it? Because I'm taking that day off. <laughs> oh, yes. On our 52nd show, uh, I won't be here because we're taking Labor Day off. It's Monday. So uh, my guest host will be Jay Leno, and uh, I'm sure he'll have a great... I'm lying. It's not going to be Jay Leno. So it's actually been just a few months since you've been here. Correct. And I know you had planned on bringing um, one of your registered nurses with us, and the timing just didn't work out. To be fair, you were both scheduled, what, four weeks ago? Correct. When the Great Flood happened here. Yes. Um, so, um, but we'll get her back on, will we not? I'm pretty sure Stacy was a little relieved. She's, a, she's really? a little bit nervous about coming on camera, but she's actually the owner uh, here in uh, Newport Ritchie. She handles, uh, her and her husband own the West Pasco home instead. All right. She she wasn't near the plumbing like that day. No, no, she was not. Anybody see a registered nurse with a, with like a big monkey wrench? And a home instead around car, the shop and a home instead car in the uh, parking lot? <laughs> yeah, no, there wasn't like that. Yeah. No, we want to get her back on because her perspective on things would be, Absolutely. I think, incredible. And um, as we know, as we've talked about uh, the last few weeks, 62 Who Knew, besides expanding uh, into a podcast in the month of September, is also going to be going to a panel show when we have our new uh, set available, more of a talk show with several people. And I still think it'll be incredible to have uh, you here with a long-term care insurance expert, with a Medicare expert, uh, to have you guys talk about really and truly how these industries work together or how they should be working together. Um, so, uh, I'd love to be a part of it. Uh, we would love to have you be part of it. So let's get into it. You know how the hour flies. Yes, sir. Uh, we're going to talk about a few different things today. Um, and this is big. It's funny that you came up with these topics. You know, I'm not in your industry, obviously, but I read, and this is big. There are big prescription risks out there Correct. Uh, for seniors. And I guess for everybody, Correct. although our world happens to be seniors, um, tell us about this. Tell us what's going on. That's that's a dangerous thing. Well, you know, in, in today's age, a lot of a lot of times, you know, we're taking supplements 
you know, then suddenly, you know, we're, we're might be taking, you know, high blood pressure medication, heart medication, mm -hmm. especially as you get older. And, and some of the things actually is, uh, some of the percentages out there is about almost 60% of the seniors, 65 and older, are taking four or more mm -hmm. prescription drugs. And about 27 of them, you know, a quarter of the population is taking six wow. or more prescription drugs. So then when you, when you tie that into you know, taking possibly supplements because everyone's listening to a friend, take this yeah. supplement, this will help you with this, take this. You know, it starts becoming a, a challenge to manage mm -hmm. those different prescriptions, uh, the different um, supplements, and how they interact with each other. Really, yeah. With it. And then just managing, as you age, just managing your, your medications. Oh, yeah. when, when doses change, things of that nature. Um, and, and as we'll, we'll talk about, there's some definitely some um, pitfalls and some uh, areas that you need to be aware of uh, before you, you you know have a mixture of medication or not pay attention and double dose, overdose, mm -hmm. um, and not pay attention to some of the side effects that could occur in medication. So that's one good thing that we have a great medical community yeah. that, that we can cure a lot of things and we live longer and we are yeah. living longer, but there is some side effects to it. Is they're, they're definitely putting us on real. drugs more quickly, more yeah, often. No doubt. Yeah, and you would think, and I'm sure there is, but you would think there is some sort of a program. You know, every time I go to the doctor, which as I get older is a little more often, they ask if I'm still on this medication, has this changed? Correct. I'm assuming that, you know, they're sitting there entering it into a laptop usually. I have a great doctor, several great doctors, unfortunately. I have more doctors than I've ever had before. Um, you would think that with today's technology, if I said, okay, I'm taking this for my high blood pressure, and this for my cholesterol, and now I just started taking B-complex shots, and I said, which I just did, and B12, you would think there would be a program on that computer that would go, wait a minute, number eight does not mix with number three. And in today's age, you would think that would be the case, but, but it's unfortunately not. it's not. That's crazy. Well, in reality, is you, if you kind of think, you know, your, your, your own self and others and, and friends of ours and relatives, that, you know, you go to, you know, you go to your primary care physician. You know, they might take care of your you know, high blood pressure, maybe even your diabetes, but then you go to your cardiologist. Yeah. Then your neurologist. And those individuals typically, unless you happen to go to the same practice, and even then yes. is, is far, you know, few and far between, mm -hmm. you know, but then you're having multiple doctors and you're managing multiple scripts. Yeah. So now you're having to really, you know, manage your own prescription and make sure the other doctor knows what the other doctor is prescribing. And that's where when you get into seniors, that's when oh, you wow. really get a, it's a pitfall because you're really, you know, not paying attention or you forgot, you know, your primary care put you on this new medication. And now that, you know, the cardiologist wants to up your dose, you know, for maybe your heart medication. Right. You, you're not really thinking about, you know, the other one. And the three how medications it, earlier. Correct. correct. And I, I always say we could do a show or a series of shows probably more like several months of the dishonest i'm gonna to to say dishonesty of of certain systems in our world i mean i could be stuck anywhere in the country in my car which is a chevrolet pull into a chevrolet agency they'll hook it up to a computer and know every service that i've ever done to it correct but if i pull into a hospital there is no system for them to go oh we see these are your 14 medications correct you really need you it's really ridiculous. need to be that that person or your family that's hard your family members well some staggering t statistics actually um, about one out of every, every five seniors has some difficulty managing their meds. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, you know, that's uh, in today's age, that's oh, a yeah. large, large number. Mm -hmm. And then 17% of them actually uh, are overwhelmed at least occasionally on taking their meds. So if you add those two together, you're approaching you know, 37, 40%, one third of the population that has some identified some problems. That's more than 100 taking, million people. Correct. One third of the population. Yes. That's, you know, and, and it's really, and it's worse than even 10% actually don't even take their, their prescriptions as prescribed. Yeah. So now you're talking, you know, again, another millions of just 65 and older. Mm -hmm. You know, we're just talking about the baby boomers that, that are coming on board. Just 10% of those are not taking their meds as no. prescribed. It's just, um, I know I, I use my father as an example. He's been gone 14 years. But at the end of his life, the last six months to a year, which I've said before, until the last, you know, two to four weeks was a very high quality of life and knock wood for people like yourselves and 
hospice, you know, that even the last two to four weeks of his life was, was uh, very comfortable. But in that last year, dad was, no exaggeration, probably taking 16 to 18 medications a day. And I, I very quickly, I got to a point where I said, I need a professional. I, I, this is just, wait a minute. We're testing the pen for his diabetes to see how much insulin he's getting. And today he sneezed a little and, and some blood came out of his nose. That would happen a lot. And the doctor would say, cut down on his, um, on his blood thinner. Mm -hmm. And then there was, and I went, wait a minute, I do mortgages. And suddenly my father's life is in my hands. Something's wrong here. But, in rea but reality is family caregivers and family members, even if mom or dad is still independent, mm -hmm. you need to play an active oh, role yeah. Oh, yeah. with your mom and dad or your grandparents to be able to help them manage their meds or at least be aware of what is going on because mm -hmm. you're going to need to to understand what some of the side effects are and some of the, the, the challenges that m they might see fit. So if you do see something <laughs> that is happening or occurring, you, you can actually pick up on those cues and mm -hmm. do something about it yeah versus just you know thinking everything's okay yeah or assuming mom's getting worse or dad's getting worse when really yeah, we would definitely see it it's just a side effect yeah of a mixture of drugs which brings us to the next subject which we always talk about and we talk about it with long-term care insurance people <clears throat> is the absolute sensitivity and emotion of balancing you know going from being the child to the caregiver which is almost from the child to the parent just sort of Correct. switching roles and what's safe and when do you tell your you know your world war ii highly decorated you know xpow father that he can't you know judge his own insulin pen Correct. or can't get behind the wheel of his car um even though he's got years of life left and his brain is working and, and the love is there it's hard it is uh, and we've it's talked very about, very emotional we talked about that at the last show and mm -hmm. on you know the 4070 rule and and it is it's one of the it's one of the largest challenges and hurdles i think family caregivers have yeah. in in making that transition from you know really son or daughter to parent yeah. and then i know it's tough from changing from parent oh, yeah. to yeah i won't say son or daughter but to that that sickly or ill parent that needs help because most of our parents don't ever admit they need help no ever no especially the older generation the greatest right. generation they could be too pride know. they're too prideful yeah. yeah but even we're too prideful i mean yeah. they us our gender yes is overly prideful we do we have so we have some vanity issues yes we have some, some not everybody's as comfortable in their masculinity <laughs> as you and i are yes i i, I when I, something I, hurts i go ow <laughs> That hurt. Man, okay. man cold takes me down every time. So <laughs> right, yeah. my wife would probably have lots of commentary on that. Yes, it is. You know, yeah. From that standpoint, but, but it is very rough though, because you know your parent is your parent. Even in your own, it's rough for them to go from, I guess, for lack of better words, they're the lifetime caregiver to the lifetime caregivee. Yep. But it is. It's very hard to look at your dad and go, Are "You sure you took the right amount? Because this doesn't look right." Or why don't I drive you to the doctor? You're walking a little unsteady. Correct. Yeah, you know, when you know they're going to look at you with love mm -hmm. and go, I taught you how to drive. I think I can. it hurts. It I really does. I, I can handle it. Yeah, I think I can handle this. Yes. And you don't want to say, no, you can't. But, you know, you really have a couple of, you know, when you're talking about medications, there's typically some, you know, really big hurdles or big issues you want to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, most of the time when you're, if you're, you know, nor I was saying a normal regimen, you're taking your meds consistently. You know that that's sort of that cadence, that march. Yeah. Everybody stays into it. So when you're looking now, you're looking for those out of steps. Yeah. The missed cadence, things of that nature. And there's some big ones that that stand out. You know, one is you know just hospital. Yeah. You, you, your mom or dad goes in the hospital, or they go into rehab. Mm -hmm. Those are primarily some of the largest areas yeah. of missteps. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, and I'll give you a real world scenario. You know. A doctor could have, you could have went in into the um, hospital, been admitted for a heart condition, and you were taking five milligrams of one particular medication. Well, after discharge, that doctor now has put you on 10 milligrams of the same medication. Right. Well, you still have the medication at home that's five milligrams, and now you just went to the pharmacy and you got a whole nother prescription okay. of 10 milligrams, and we all have the cupboard. I mean, man, yes. we all have the cupboard at home. Walk in, so open they can it up, be taking both, and there's and there is nothing but all the medication that have been, you know, possibly one, two, three years old from the past doctor, from the past cardiologist, and yeah, that's where those pitfalls. Because obviously, when you're coming home from the hospital or you're coming home from uh, rehab, you know, you're just in 
playing tennis, you're not as healthy as you no want, as you not. were. You know, you, you're tired. Mm -hmm. you, you might be you're recovering. You might be in pain. You're not completely thinking straight. So that is one of the largest areas of opportunity for medication mishaps mm -hmm. uh, with it. And those are when you really need a son or a daughter or a caregiver or someone that is assisting you with your medication to know, you know, hey, you were on five milligrams, now you're on 10, let's get rid of that old medication. Yes. How to properly dispose of it mm -hmm. and make sure you're not double dosing. Yeah, and you know, let's face it, with the strength of the drugs today, and there are some miracle drugs out there, you know, 10 milligrams, I hate to be dramatic, but 10 milligrams is a lifesaver and 15 could kill you. Correct. Yeah, it, it's really, it, it's, what you say really, it really steps up for me, it really hits home. Because I remember coming home with dad, uh, his last year was congestive heart failure. So unfortunately, we're in the hospital too much. And we had some great doctors who said, remember, here's his new medicine. When you get home, ask the nurse to get rid of the old Correct. medicine. I'm not sure everybody does that. No. Well, you even look at the medic, not just the medications. You have to look at your supplements. Because, you know, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I go and I've had surgery before. And next thing you know, I'm starting to read on my pre-surgery, you know, you need to stop taking fish oil. Or, or, or any of those type of uh, blood thinners right. two weeks prior to surgery. So you know you're 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 an older adult. You 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 know you're taking fish oil because people have said that's that's good yeah. for you. It's good for your hair. It's good for your nails. It's not you working know. for you hair wise. I no, I, I, no. Way. <laughs> I had there's, to say no, that. there's nothing there's nothing that's going to save we this. We need to get you a lot more fish. Yeah, uh, a lot more. Uh, I prefer order some fish, please. I, I prefer the bald look. <laughs> okay. uh, it, it does much better for me uh, than the Doctor Phil look, as I would oh, like I to have. Doctor Phil. Um, but uh, it, it is it's one of those things you have to pay attention because you you might might not have told the doctor that hey, and by the way, I'm, I'm I am taking fish mm -hmm. oil or I'm taking flaxseed oil or something of that yeah. nature. Then you come home with blood thinners yeah. from the doctor. And now you're still going right back to your old routine, mm -hmm. which you wake up and then we're all we're all kind of like, you know, that yes. routine hounds. We, we just it's get up and do the same thing every morning. And you're in there making your coffee, taking your supplements. And next thing you know, you add you add a uh, blood thinner on top of your sup, you know, normal yeah. supplements of, of uh, fish oil or something or your flaxseed oil. You're laying on the floor. Yeah, it's that, it could be that quick. You mm -hmm. don't pay attention to it. So you really need to understand how everything interacts not just the, the medication, but you also need to be truthful with your doctor about wh your doctor what type of supplements you're taking, and make sure your family is aware of what type mm -hmm. of supplements you're taking. Because if, when you start looking at what interacts with each other, you might be a little shocked. Oh my God, yeah. Don't want to stop everything, but you at least need to understand how things work together and complement each other or cause side effects. When uh, I, I, I again, I, to me, with the greed of the pharmaceutical industry why they haven't invented a program, which has got to be so easy to sell to every doctor that compares every medicine that they're prescribing is beyond me. Why they, you know, and maybe it does exist out there. We just some, I think some of it is, some of it is privacy. Some of it is, some of it, some is, it is, is, they just want to keep selling lots of drugs. Yes. I think, it w I think obviously in hospital chains and in large groups, the benefit is, outweighs the, the, the negatives, but yeah. I, I think part of it is is the simple fact that it's it's it people want privacy, it. people don't yeah. want their business out there, and and most of us think they're going to use it. I mean, right, yeah. no one knew five years ago that Google or Facebook would practically know everything everything about I mean, us. Yeah, if if you're googling your ten different medicines to see what the side effects are, I can't believe there's not a master file somewhere saying this is the medicine this guy's on. Yes, it, it that which is incredibly Google scary. Google probably knows, but your doctor doesn't know. Yeah. Google and Facebook control the world. It's just, yeah, I think the world needs to accept that. That's just it. Google and Facebook. A little, little detour there, but yeah, yes. Little, it, little, but I digress. Yes. I remember reading about, um, you don't read that much about it anymore, and I don't know why, but when my dad was weakening the last six months of his life, and I was, you know, I think like a lot of laymen, you know, I was Googling things and, and blah, blah, blah. I started to read about chelation. Mm -hmm. where you, you know, they take all your blood out and... They filter it and they put it all back in, and you, and you're healthy again. I'm thinking, well, congestive heart failure, diabetes. He's got all this stuff. We'll put him in a tank. We'll, ref you know, we'll take everything out. We'll refill him. Called my doctor. Or his doctor is a great, great doctor. In fact, uh, I don't see why I can't say his name because I, I think he's great. Doctor Paul Denko, who's probably in retirement by now. Just a wonderful, wonderful doctor. He was downtown Clearwater. Took great care of my mother and father. And I said, you know what we're gonna do? He goes, what? I go, we're gonna put him in for we're going to take all the stuff out of his blood that's bad, and he'll be fine. 
He goes, well, that's half the truth. I go, what's the other half? He goes, all the stuff we pump them with is what's keeping them alive. Exactly. He said, that's what you seem to forget. He said, as much as you don't like seeing the injections going into him and the, mm -hmm. the B12 and the iron <clears throat> and, the, and, the, and the insulin, if we take that out of his system, he'll die while he's in there getting his blood changed. So I think it's very, it's very scary for a non-professional which is what we really mostly all are. Correct. Unless your care doctor, care taker happens to be a doctor or a nurse. None of us know anything about this. It's very scary. It is, but that's where but that's where you need to have some I hate to use the word common sense, yeah. but but just some um, some thought process behind it that you know, when you are going to your doctor, you should have all your scripts. You don't need to bring them all with you. I have them on here. Yeah, but on you, notes. Yeah. Correct. But you at least need to start writing down what you're taking. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know, supplements, your your medications, everything. So it is it is with you. Share it with your son or daughter. Mm -hmm. You know, share it with someone that you, that you trust that they can also be aware of what's you know going on. Help help them come into your world and your life yeah. and share that information with you. Yes, it might be. Uh, a little bit daunting to, to open up a little bit, but yeah. they're going to be able to see what some of the side effects are and look for some of the warning signs that That's are right. they're going to that are going to pop up if there happens to be any mixture or side effects or some of the warning signs that come up. But share because what you should have is a nice detailed list. Yeah. You bring to your doctor, you share. So really, that that software program you you, you want really it, yeah. it still kind of puts on self. Yeah, it's on notes. It's on here. us, correct. Yeah, at, at 61 years old, if I, I thought I was years away from having to write down my medication on my phone when I went to a doctor. Um, and I hate admitting that. You know, and uh, I'm on a few. You know, um, hey, it's a struggle. For, I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah. I just turned 50. It's a struggle for me. And I don't take, uh, I don't take a lot of prescription medication, but I do take a lot of supplements. I've always tried to be healthy. I've been an athlete most of my life. Um, not much more of my knees feeling the way they feel, but... Mm -hmm. But now I'm starting to learn that, you know, I'm taking, you know, enough. I need to I need to start remembering and writing things down just even when I go to the doctor <laughs> to, to tell what I'm having. Because even with simple, uh, you know, um, anti-inflammatory medications, mm -hmm. as simple as those are, there's actually reactions to Absolutely. supplements. Mm -hmm. So the doctor needs to know that, you know what, you're taking these supplements. You, you need to have this anti-inflammatory or, you know what, you need to stop that before I can get, prescribe this to you. So even even at right. you know my young age of fifty, there is even challenges with continuing trying to be healthy with just taking my or mild or moderate, mm -hmm. you know, anti-inflammatories on a few occasions. Well, I've learned the hard way um, that prednisone, which you know throughout my life I don't I've never been that sick, but you know you get a little chest infection, you get a little something, you get a little prednisone, it opens you right up, mm -hmm. and then I uh, fell victim to COPD about four or five years ago, well under control, never smoked in my life. But well under control, life is good, I breathe great. Um, but I went on prednisone to help me breathe. And there was a time there that I needed prednisone mm -hmm. to help me breathe. And uh, to a couple of people in the, in the industry, family members and doctors said to me, prednisone is a miracle drug unless you use too much of it. And then it causes real damage. But that's what's so spooky about this, the all our drugs today. Yes. Yeah, which is I guess a lot, well, I guess it's like everything else. You use it correctly, it's great. You don't use it correctly, it's not. I guess it's not that overly deep. But when they told me the possible, I, I don't do side effects anymore. I will not you know, go on to uh, any medical things. I will not Google possible side effects uh, because if I did, I wouldn't take anything. In fact, I might not leave the house. Yeah, I'm pretty sure most of them say, you know, in, death. including death. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so. the, the last, the last. Uh, yeah, it's funny <laughs> when you in a little, little sidebar, just a, a, yeah. I, what I consider humor in this very serious conversation. Mm -hmm. But listening to to medication, you know, commercials. It's really, you know, 15 minute. Fifth, the first 15 seconds of a 30 minute commercial is about the actual drug. The last 15 minutes is all the with, warnings. Is all the warnings talking as fast as they can talk. Yeah. To to get them all out, and then yeah, they slip in this, yes, including death. Including death. And, yeah. <laughs> Uh, also, it's like, hold on, pause, rewind. Did I hear that right? Yeah, another one of my great doctors who put it in perspective for me before I stopped looking at warnings. He you know, said to me, let me be honest with you about something. And just blunt. I said, go ahead. And again, I said, great doctor. Just a great doctor. She goes, let me give you the warnings, symptoms of starting your car in the morning. Electric, gas, combustion, fire, instant explosion, death, being burned alive. These are all possible things when you do that in your car. Mm-hmm. She goes, so do I make my point? I said, yeah, I'm, I'm going to walk home. That's a, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, but yeah, it is true. Some of these warning stuff is just, 
I know they're saying it because one out of a hundred thousand people it happened to and it's always the almighty dollar and Correct. and their malpractice insurance. But I, I can't tell you how many times I've hesitated to take something, then thinking, No, I trust my doctor. He said take it, take it. But I think there's a lot of people out there who hear those warnings and go, I don't think so. No. Well and that's also kinda of goes in the whole dosing thing. You mm-hmm. need to you do need to know, you know, not only do you need to know what drug you're being prescribed, but you also need to know what doses mm-hmm. that you're supposed to be prescribing and the time you're supposed to be taking it. So you do. That's why again, it's 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 in the scheme of things, managing a couple of meds isn't too difficult. Yeah. Um, but when you start getting into you know most of our seniors again, the the statistic was over 57 percent was on four one almost one fourth of the population was six plus, and those are actual medications, prescribed medications. You know, you really need to start understanding, you know, how they interact, the doses, the side effects, the, mm-hmm. the, the co-side effects. Oh, yeah. it, is, it is important to, to pay attention to those little things because you're right. It, you, you don't know that, you know, simply taking, you know, too much of one medication too close together could easily cause, you know, uh, symptoms of dementia. could be right. symptoms of, of uh, as Alzheimer's or confusion. And people are going to start n- not associating that with, medication mishaps Mm -hmm. they're going to associate that with mom or dad is slipping yes absolutely and i think that's probably one of the mis mis misconceptions about medication management especially with family caregivers because we come over we see mom or dad yeah and and we see that they're not quite the same and unfortunately we go straight towards you know there's a problem mom or dad is slipping you know, grandma or grandpa is not the same. Right. And we go always to the, to the instantaneous bad portion of it versus really where family caregivers need to step in and really, you know, buffer the difference between being taking away the, the, the independence of mom or dad. Right. But being because most people, it's the other part of, the, of some statistics is 90 percent of the seniors are open to help. That's right. So they're why they're very personal and want to keep their freedoms and keep you know their independence they are open very open to help so as long as the our loved ones enter into their lives in a in a i won't say a professional manner but in a non-intrusive non-intrusive understanding manner um and understand what they're asking their their loved one to do Mm -hmm. then most of the time you're going to find the their loved one very open to sharing what medications they're on, mm-hmm. sharing the, you know, letting you, you know, m- help even manage it, look up the side effects and be aware that, hey, you know what, some of the side effects of this are confusion or, uh, you know, increase this or fever or sweating. And when those things are swelling, you know, when those things occur, our mind shouldn't run directly to mom Stroke or dad's heart attack, yeah. mom or dad slipping. Yeah. You know, they go, oh, wait a minute, this might be just a, a simple mix of a medication mom and then you go into it and it's almost like a a, a list that we you know we have is you know what what are you doing what happened what did you take when was mm-hmm. the last one you know and you try to go down what occurred over the last maybe 12 hours and identify before you make the knee jerk reaction button. yep and and it could be it could still be a 911 call right but that 911 call could be hey mom i believe mom or dad overdosed or had a little too much of this which is throwing a, a very precise dart yes versus a Quick, shotgun. come over. I have yeah. no idea. Yeah, and then then they're testing, and and you're you're, you're basically doing a shotgun approach to yeah. it. So absolutely, seniors are open and willing to share. Mm-hmm. Just know where you can you can your boundaries are. Keep, let them have their independence. Let them continue taking their meds, mm-hmm. but monitor, monitor them. Understand you know where the pitfalls are and manage to those risks, not to being an overprotective son or daughter. Right. And stepping on mom or dad's independence. Yeah. Because exactly. that's where relationships do get frayed. Oh, there's bit. no doubt. And I think that's where you guys come in a lot, I think. Correct. I think there's no doubt. My dad, I mean, I don't know if there was ever two people closer than uh, than my father and myself, but he would take bad news that he thought affected his independence better from a stranger than he would me. Mm-hmm. If I said, you know, it's time maybe to think about selling the car, there would be a rash of F-bombs. You know, that, that, that's the way he was. You know, Absolutely. He wouldn't be mad, but, you know, the, the, I don't think so. I'll make that decision. But if a caregiver, a professional caregiver, Correct. a doctor, nurse, or someone in your someone like in your company would have suggested <clears throat> that, we go, well, why do you think that? Yeah, I said the same thing. Why are you cursing at me? 
It is. It, it, it is. It comes from a. It comes from a different source. It's. It's viewed differently, mm -hmm. from a different lens or whatever. I. I can't explain it, but you're 100. percent You're 100 percent right with it, um, and, and and it really you know. Is is something that though we should be, <clears throat> we should be aware of, from the simple fact of you know when you look at hospitalizations, you know you're you're looking at almost a third of senior hospitalizations are. Um, drug related I I had no idea that I never would have guessed correct and 11% of those about one out of every 10 is directly re reflected to medication mismanagement or medication mistakes that's a again when you're talking about 10% of you know let's you start slicing that number up 20 a third yeah. of everyone's six or old six drugs are over you're yeah. talking about one out of you're every talking 10 tens of millions of people again. correct over a year tens of, it could be tens of millions of vi hospital visits that are directly related to medication mishaps and this is going to do nothing but get more serious i i don't want to say worse but i guess i should say worse as we continue to live to be 90 95 100 105 um you know i don't think we're going to be doing it without medication no i mean hopefully if we can get better foods and and you know, you know, I'm not obviously I'm not a health nut. I'm a rack of ribs away from stroking out myself here. <laughs> um, but you know, I hope the next generations are not downing the grease, and you know, so I hope they'll they'll need less medication in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. But um, that, that's amazing that it one is. third of the people that go to a hospital, seniors, mm -hmm. is based on some sort of malfunction with medication. Well, it's related to it's related to medication, and then if you want to look at it. 10% are directly related to mismanagement of medication. So it's still, both numbers are, are very staggering and high. But you look at the strain on our hospital situation, you look at yeah. the strain on, on just our physicians. That, if you could have a, just curtail that slightly, it's a huge impact. Yes. Not only to the hospital, you know, chains, but just to the family dynamics, yeah. to mom or dad's health, you know, because uh, yeah, I don't, we didn't, we didn't survey, or we didn't get into that portion of the survey of how many of those 10% resulted possibly in long-term yes. effects, be it, you know, negative or even related to yeah. death. Yeah. You know, but still, when you start talking about 10%, that's a large number yeah. of medication missions. 10% of anything you have to pay attention to. Correct. Yes, know, sir. In any field, in, in any, yeah, Correct. you know, the, the pressure, we talk about this a lot, and that's where a company like yours comes in, and uh, I still say, I think the first person to say it on our show might have been the first show or the fifth show with Mark Goldberg, and I, I never remember the percentage, and I know that makes me a bad host, but in the um, the percentage of caretakers that actually get gravely ill or predecease the person they are doing the caretaking for, it just gives me the chills when you think about that. There's a lot of pressure it is. to be a caretaker. I, well, it's a, I'm, I can I can absolutely personally attest to the our clients mm -hmm. that we've had a I won't say a large quantity but we've had enough of uh, high profile clients that have we've taken care of their caregiver and their caregiver has passed before they our That's original client has passed simply because well a lot of times and again I think the m mental mind of a family caregiver is, is a different beast in its own right. Yeah. I, and I think they want to be able to make sure mom or dad is taken care of, and they're going to put their needs before their own needs. Mm -hmm. And they don't find that healthy balance right. between you know taking care of their loved one and taking care of themselves. And unfortunately, it's a slippery slope. It is. Once you become sick or once you start down that path, and again, once you, you get into this, if you think about it, some 90-year-old, well, if you have a 90-year-old mom, most likely in that generation, you're going to be in your 70s. That's right. Reality, because they they start the families kid. young. Yeah. yeah. You're 70, so you you might already be on six-plus medications. That's right. And your mom's on six-plus medications. And your or children your dad. are on four. Correct. So, you, you know, you're, and you, might have, you might have a 50-year-old son or daughter. That's right. So when you start looking at this and you're looking at mom or dad being, you know, their mom or dad's caregiver, <clears> you're, <throat> you're really looking at you know a multiplier there that's that's unfortunately not a healthy equation no, for not. most family caregivers and is that when we call in someone i mean people think uh, i know until i well I, i'd say you brought it home and made it clear but until my mom got sick i, I think until your mother and father until something happens with your mother and father you don't know a lot about this you're usually right. young when your grandparents go through it your grandparents were old when you were born not that you're going to miss them any less, but 
you know your grandparents are going before anybody. Correct. Uh, I really have said this many times. It's not till either your mother or your father go till I think <clears throat> a, a real person understands what death is or what loss is or what being a caregiver really means. Um, it took me a while. My dad was the caregiver for my mom. I was the caregiver for dad. And I, and it, it took me a few months before I said to dad, I'm going to bring somebody in to sit with you in the middle of the night. I'm doing it, but I'm exhausted. Correct. You know, I'm not running the mortgage company correctly. I mean, there's nothing more important than you. But I don't think I'm doing you a service. I'm not sure I can stop you from falling down anymore. No. You're 210 pounds. Correct. What am I going to do here? And uh, he was fine with it. I think I was worse. We kind of switched roles again. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, he didn't want me taking care of him. And now I think we kind of switched roles where he went, you're right. You need to get some sleep. Go get somebody. It's, it's a constant turmoil. It, and especially with medication. Medication is that, that – that fine line, you know, I, I would definitely, absolutely, home instead, individuals like us that are out there, absolutely are are able to manage medication. We're we're there to help with self administration. <clears throat> RNs could even administer medication, so y you have a lot of options. There. But you know, there is a lot of things that you can do before you end up having to go to an outside agency, okay. and and that would be you know, Walgreens. A lot of these a lot of these uh, you know pharmacies or online pharmacies have pill packs. Yes. They have the ability to get, and they'll even manage your medication. So the doctor has to call in. They do a lot of the cross-referencing to the other, other medication. As long as you're getting all of your medications fulfilled by that particular pharmacy in a pill pack, mm -hmm. and you're not you know, cross-contaminating, taking your own yeah. thing on the side, then they'll help you manage that. So mm -hmm. it's a really nice way to do it. Now, you can't get supplements. You can't get some of the other things that are non-script. Uh, and those are free services. You know, they're, they're billing Medicare. For the for the pharmacy, course, you know, so there's, okay. there's money in there for them, uh, but it simplifies. It says, you know, here's your AM pack, here's your PM pack, here's your bedtime pack. So everything's spelled out for you. You know, it's really nice and simple. So that's kind of the, that first level. Um, if you want to get past the the handwritten your notes, your notebook right. notes, um, then you can go into a pill dispenser, some sort of of you know either yourself who coming through and setting up the pill boxes or having a company like ours that come in for the nurse and help set up pill boxes things of that nature again those are the things that that keep your 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 family independent right and and, and self-sufficient but giving some peace of mind that they're still getting the medication when they're supposed to get it and it's manageable you can walk in you can see you know, it's Tuesday, mom didn't take med PM, so what What happened, why, right. or pills are missing, then you understand something's going on, versus, you know, just seeing the pill bottles in the cabinet. Right. And next thing you know, you're up there counting every one of them. That's right. Trying to figure out what's going on. So and pill by box, then it's a little late. The dam some damage might be done. Depending on the drugs? Yeah. A, absolutely, it could be. Uh, and then you kind of take into the next step of some, some of the things we talked about, medication machines, you know, a little bit more control. They kind of alert mom or dad when the, the meds are time for, ready mm -hmm. to take. Um, so you have a lot of different layers that you can help your parents or your loved one manage their medications without just jumping in there like a bull in a china shop mm -hmm. and taking over. It's funny you mentioned Walgreens. Now that I think about it, the only time in the last five years of my life <coughs> that somebody said, Michael, there could be a problem between these two medications, it was the pharmacist when I was picking up my prescription. Absolutely. It was them. It was, In fact, it was Walgreens. Mm -hmm. um, they do a great job. A lot of the pharmacies do a great job of doing the pill packs and what they'll do is they'll they'll coordinate all your prescriptions with the doctors and that's one of the things that they will you know do and because i can i encourage a lot of their families that call us and they only they're looking for like minor services pill you know medication management mm -hmm. maybe things of that nature and before they really dive into having to pay us <coughs> an hourly wage or anything right. of that nature I always let them know that there's alternatives out there for simply med management mm -hmm. um, that they might want to take first before they come down our path. Because typically when we come down, you know, the, our, the home instead path or, or another agency's path is you want to be able to have not just ma medications, but you want to have the, the companionship. Right. You want to talk about the other things that we want to, we need to do, mm -hmm. you know, be it meal preps, things of that nature to make it a complete package from mom or dad versus just someone coming in setting up their pill boxes and moving on before we talk about a complete package and a couple other things i always meant to ask you this sure and, and then we get we always have such great conversations that's why we invite you back so much i know you've gone out of your way and now i do it when i talk about you because we speak about your company even when you're not here you know the largest non-medical in-home care company but you do have rns that can 
and RNs are not non-medical. Correct. So w when you say non-medical, because you came and helped with my nephew in Tampa mm -hmm. General Hospital yep. um, a few months ago. Thank you so much for that. Um, what do you mean by non-medical when you have RNs? They're about as medical as you can get. Y yes. Uh, you know, there's a bureaucracy mm -hmm. and, and, and statutes in, in, in Florida. Um, one of the things, no matter who you are in the, in the medical field, you, you have to have an RN on staff. So even if you're fully what they call a skilled agency that are right. going to be doing a lot of medical, they have a director of nursing. Director of nursing manages all of the nurses below them um, or and caregivers below them to make sure the plan of care, things that they're supposed to be doing right. in the home, is taken care of. So that's some regulations that they have. Mm -hmm. Well, just because we're non-medical doesn't mean the state just allows us to do, <coughs> any, do right. anything we want to do. Um, we have to have an RN on staff. One, okay. to, to make sure our caregivers are tested. You know, mm -hmm. they, they go through the proper training. They can demonstrate skills. So again, we didn't, anyone that just puts a caregiver in a four hour class or a six hour class right. and sends them out to their first shift is really not setting one, the caregiver up for success, let alone the family member or the senior up oh for success. God, yeah. So that's why RNs are supposed to be there because the RNs are licensed. They are the ones that sign off on the skills of a new caregiver or even existing caregiver that we hire to ensure that they have a base minimum standard of skills before they go into the home. So the RN plays a, a similar but different role than they do with a traditional skilled or you know medical, right. if you want to call that, home health company versus a non-medical home health company. You. And then, you know, we don't do some of the services that a, a traditional RN, you know, yes, we'll, we, we'll do medication management, but we're, we don't do injections. You know, we, we don't do PT, you don't replace O2. a catheter. You don't replace an IV. No. Catheters, it, obviously, it's not to get too far down the weeds. There's different too types of catheters. Yeah, there's different types of catheters. Okay. There's externals. There's okay. internals. So you might be someone that just might be a little bit incontinent. You might wear an external catheter, a male oh, gotcha. or a female, just at night. Mm -hmm. Those are things that will fall within our what we call scope of services right. versus an internal catheter that, no, that's a skilled agency gotcha. that handled by a nurse. That's not us. We can change the bags. Right. You know, we can help that. No, but we, we're not messing with, with the, the insertion so points. Mean. Yes. Now, a company like yours, you have a fairly large uh, you know, operation. You have one registered nurse per, or does it depend on how many people, patients you have, or care? How does it? It's really this, your size. It, it, it really depends on, on your size. We actually have two, care, two nurses for our staff, um, one that hand, runs our quality assurance team. Mm -hmm. So she's actually out in the field ensuring that our caregivers and my staff are doing the right things. Mm -hmm. So she's actually out visiting families, making sure. We then have an RN that actually handles our training. So he he handles, and he's, a, he's an adjunct professor at a, at a CNA school. Mm -hmm. So he comes in and he handles all of our training, makes sure all of our uh, curriculum's up to date, mm -hmm. <clears throat> teaches everything, and does all the hands-on skills, and signs off on a caregiver before they actually physically go out into the home. Mm -hmm. So depends. We have, you know, we're a large franchise. Yeah. Others are much a little smaller, so they may not need a full time RN, let oh. alone two full time RNs. So you don't necessarily need the full time. No. I'm checking out my question. Um, it always has amazed me that. Well, first of all, it amazes me that the hour <coughs> goes so quick. We have like 15 minutes left, but we still got good time. Mm -hmm. How people that do what you do for a living, um, the mental attachment to your patients, which I've seen firsthand with Absolutely. my mom and my dad, is so staggering. Um, and let's face it, many of your patients have a limited lifespan. Um, not all, I mean, you know, but, but many of them do. How they next week go do it again with someone else. To me, correct. That, that, that's just unbelievable. Oh, well, it's it, a gift. Yes. And, and the, the, the mentality of a caregiver, be it professional caregiver like it works for us, or a family caregiver, is second and I, I am I find myself outside of heart and and selflessness those are those are the only really terms that really come to mind quickly yeah. they they put themselves second to the other person mm -hmm. and it is amazing um, and I think it's also you know a tough situation because it's it's for family caregivers it's an unpaid yeah so there's a lot of sacrifice with it and a lot of pressure that goes on to the family be it, be it the husband or the spouse or the wife, you know, someone has to pick up where the other spouse That's right. is picking up mom or dad's care or, you know, help. Mm -hmm. Someone else has to pick up the family's help. So you got to have a really strong, you know, relationship there. And that's where, unfortunately, a lot of, you know, things get awry, you know, mm -hmm. families get hurt, things of that nature. 
Um, and then our professional side, I'd love, I would love to pay all of our caregivers more. They do such a fantastic job, yeah. but there, it's one of those, it, it's a, and not, I'll be blunt. It's a, it's, a, it's sort of the, the devil yeah, thing with it because unfortunately, you know, you have to, to pay more, you have to charge more. Yeah. And, and, you know, as my wife, my wife says, you know, our seniors are retired. Their income making capabilities are not behind them. They're not. Yeah. They're behind them. So whatever they have in front of them mm -hmm. has to last for the rest of their life. Yeah. And my wife and I are very cognizant that if you, if you don't, then as you and I have talked many times, mm -hmm. once you become, you've outlived your money, then your life has a, a major change in you because now you're going into possibly a yeah. Medicaid nursing home or Medicaid assisted living. A and a lot of times that's not the lifestyle or the life that you led, but you've just simply outlived your funds. Yeah, that's so my wife is ultra, ultra sensitive to, you know, asking our seniors to pay more because they're 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 not able to earn anymore i know many um personal you know caregivers not family caregivers but professionals that um i have to say long after the patient ran out of money was still coming absolutely to their own financial detriment of their own family yes because they have bills to pay that's why they have a job yes um yeah the heart of a caregiver is uh is just kind of staggering it's second to none i mean they, they it takes a unique individual you know, uh, not to put you know my funnies out, right. but it, it is. How do you yeah. how do you walk into a home? I always kid some of the my wife will probably beat me, hit me for doing this or saying this. But you know, how do you how do you walk into a, a, a new home or come into someone that you're giving a bath to, yeah. or you need to you know help them with? You know, it's like you, know, you walk in the door, and go, hey, let's we're here, let's 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 What's get that? naked, let's get naked and get in the shower. Yeah. How do you break that ice? You the only I've done way to that do many it times is I got slapped. I mean, it's just. <laughs> But the caregiving wasn't involved, so maybe that yeah, was that was that's a whole different show, a, whole, a different whole different, show, a whole different channel too. Uh, <laughs> but you know, it's it's hard, and the only way to do it is relationship. You have got to be able to make right. that personal connection with that human you're caring for, and it's and I'll tell you, and that's the again, I get long winded on this, but some of the some of the things I've seen in my team because I didn't come from this industry, I came from a different what background, say, yeah. and I, I always amazed. At the individuals that suddenly, when it's when it's not a, a job, you know what? I, I started out doing this. I'm only taking care of companionship, or I'm just, you know, having meals, or I'm mm -hmm. just doing small things with family, or the, the, my, you know, the my client. Next thing you know, something happens. They've been together a year or six months, maybe even a little longer, and they've developed that relationship. And suddenly now they're no longer looking at that as a client relationship. That's mm -hmm. that's a, my friend. Yeah, I, and now yeah. I'm okay with doing some of the things I wasn't okay with a year from now. I've always admired the uh, the evolution that our caregivers go through for taking care of our seniors. Yeah, and, and I've I've said this many times. Well, again, since my mom passed 16 years ago, that was my first uh, experience with hospice, uh, who is a special group of angels. Yes, um, I just don't know what, what, how they get human beings like this, and and I always I get a little negative because being self-employed myself in the business world you have a hard time finding good help absolutely a good receptionist a good processor a good loan officer a good accountant a good this how is hospice and and companies like yours home instead finding these angels to walk into people's house develop that bond mm -hmm. and take it past the x amount of dollars per hour correct it, it's true caring and uh, again it just staggers me because it's true caring from the second they walk in. Yes, I, like you said, the bond becomes closer. Correct. Six months or a year. Um, but I've yet to meet one. I've met a lot of people in my life where I've gone, yeah, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I'll get a roof from a different person or I don't want them working on my car. Or, yeah, maybe my son's right. She's not such a good teacher. Mm -hmm. She seems a little mean. I think maybe my son's right. Um, yet to meet a caregiver where when they left, you just didn't go, how did, how did they become like this? If they, they don't, it, they don't last long in the industry if they really? don't have a caring gene. Oh, okay. Um, they they don't. They they good caregivers are hard to find, and you hold on to them yeah. as best you can. But you also have to balance that because again, even as a professional caregiver, you know you have stresses. Yeah. Uh, you you see things that you may not have seen in your own personal life, mm -hmm. be it death or family drama or whatever it is. You're exposed to yeah. you know the aging process you're exposed to all the things that come along with mom or dad or grandma and grandpa becoming older and passing away mm -hmm. and and some of us and even for me 
as much as as I've had turmoil in my life with with family, it, it still doesn't get easier. No, I've gotten no. numb to it a lot. You've learned how to handle it. Yes, but it's 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 still it's still surprising, and, and I always try to warn people to be prepared for you know the next step, whatever that next step is. If that is you know mom's just getting a little older, you know whatever it is, mom's got to go in a nursing home, mom's got to go in assisted living, or she needs home care, whatever it is. Be prepared for the next one because as much as I'd love to tell my four year old son I'm going to be around forever, I, I know that's not yeah. real. You know, and yes, caregivers play a huge, huge role, and family caregivers. I, I again, I, I know I'm, I work for professionals and I hire professional yeah. caregivers, but I can't say enough about family They're caregivers. They're unbelievable. They're the, the people that put their lives on hold to do things like this, to jump into medications, and to deal with the day-to-day -day aspects of their parents' lives. I, I can't, I can't even imagine. We, uh, yeah, it, it's unbelievable. We on one of the future shows, I want to talk about when you're here. Because uh, we're we're probably down to a few minutes at this point, uh, I want to talk about. I don't even want to call it burning out, but there has to be a saturation point. Somebody becomes a professional caregiver in their twenties or thirties. Maybe they were nursed and they came into caregiving. I mean, how many decades of of love and loss you know, can a human being take? You know, Correct. There's a you know, many people don't realize this, but you know, many psychologists, maybe many psychiatrists are alcoholics. You know, how long can you sit around? listening you know to people's problems before it does start to affect you uh the best people in the world policemen right i have you know, the most respect for in the world but they have a high um you know they have a, a high rate of, of abuse and things such as that yes sir. because how long can you be with the worst of society you're only human well in the is, scheme there, of, is there something similar like that it is but i i would say from my perspective uh, this in the scheme of things our industry home and said being only 25 years old and we're one of the the older, you know, um, franchise and systems out there. That portion of the study is has I would say that has yet to be right. looked at. I know it's being looked at, but again, being only twenty five, even though twenty five is a long time. Yeah. In the scheme of things, it's for a an quarter industry, of a person in today's world. Correct. For an industry, we're still in our youth right. as an industry. So yes, we don't we don't know the the per se the long term effects of being a caregiver, but we do know. From being a family caregiver, there is a lot of risks associated to it. So I think there is some some parallels that we can use, uh, and I hope for you know uh, all of our sakes that the Congress and other people will will do some things for those family caregivers because yeah. it's needed. It's definitely well, needed. One of the times that we, you're going to come back, I hope, on the panel show Absolutely. is to introduce a new uh, uh, Mark Goldberg is coming on to introduce a new uh, long-term care insurance product uh, by Nationwide, you know, a name that everybody trusts. Uh, that, that does include certain cash. Uh, I don't want to screw it up because it's not my level of expertise, but of taking care of the caregiver. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a guest a few weeks ago, which, again, I'd love you to meet, even though she beamed in from another state, um, who was talking about how normally, are we okay on time? We're still okay. Um, you know, you have a son and a daughter, and in many, many cases, it is the daughter that steps forward and says, I'm going to take care of mom. Correct. I'm going to give her the bath. I'm going to leave my job. And uh, we brought on a financial planner who talked about how 10, 15, 20 years later, 30 years later, that daughter is in her 70s or 80s, and they go to retire, 60s or 70s. Dad is getting $2,500 a month or $2,200 a month in Social Security. She's getting 1200 She was a nurse. She Correct. was a teacher. She made as much money as Dad, but she took five years off to be a caregiver Correct. out of her income. Her Social Security is worse. Uh, less, there's less in her 401k, there's less in her IR. Suddenly, the ramifications of that daughter taking care of her mom or dad 20 to 30 years later is coming home. Something I never would have thought of until this person brought that up. What a staggering. I, I don't know how, I, I've heard this and I don't know if it's an accurate statement or not, but when you look at you know, the iceberg, be it caregivers, um, we're just the little tip of the paid caregivers that's poking out of the ocean. Yeah. The unpaid caregivers oh, yeah. is massive. It's the, it's the rest of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. I've heard that, it, you know, of a, from a, we're a billion dollar industry, multi-billion dollar Multi, industry. Yeah. But my, from what I've heard, we're only representing maybe 20 to 25% of, if you quantified all caregiving. Really? Yeah. We're, a, we're a very small portion of, of, of the caregiving pool. 
um, when it comes to f compared to professional caregivers and family caregivers. I got to give. I will do it tomorrow, but before the end of tomorrow, uh, we got a little less than two minutes to go. I want to give you an introduction to Mark Lickman, our our um, our guest from last week, because his his website is one of the few that is concentrating on the two hundred million home caregivers, Correct. not professionals. You know, to be a resource for them. Um, would love to introduce you to because love two to. professional two giants like you guys could maybe it's it's just it's all life now it's not the abnormal part it's it's life correct yeah you know, as you know it's uh so um well if you don't mind let me get let no, me get over, do. We're let, still let, good. yeah let the everyone know um because obviously we only touched on a few of the topics on this it's whole on, on this whole particular thing so if anyone's out there that wants to have help or needs help resource this isn't a plug for home instead it's actually go to caregivingstress.com it's just caregivingstress.com it's a great resource. Yes, it is brought to you by Homestead, but there's a ton of resources on there from helping medication management to having the 47 year old that's been on here before to, to having the talk about driving with your with your parents. There's a lot of resources on caregivingstress.com that will help you as a family caregiver or even as a senior to know some of the potential pitfalls that you should be aware of mm -hmm. that, that you will eventually need help with. So. There's only uh, 36 seconds left, but I do want to do a shameless plug because uh, not too long ago with a, a very a close loved one in the hospital, um, oh, God, we're running out of time, um, fighting a very, very hard disease, you know, mom, dad, his mom, dad, mom, his uncle, you know, we were, we were all exhausted and we needed somebody to stay in that hospital to be, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, and uh, everyone's going, what should we do, what should we do, who can we trust? Well, I know who you can trust, but calling, you know, home yep. instead, so thank you for being there when you needed us. My pleasure. Next week, eight seconds left. I've wanted this guest for so long, Ms. Margaret, uh, Ms. Marjorie Gelbweck Schaefer, top life insurance person in the country. You're going to learn a lot. We just ran out of time. See you next week.